In this video, we are gonna take this photo and we are gonna turn it into this photo. And uh, we're gonna use Lightroom and some Photoshop to do it. Folks, my name is Matt Klaskowski. I wanna welcome you back to the Photo Makeover series where uh, I don't edit my photos, I edit your photos. And I picked this one, this one's from Ben. Uh, so big thanks for uh, for submitting it. And I picked this one because, you know, it's got a kind of a cool candid feel to it. You know, it's just, he's got a little mischievous look on his face with his tongue out. And uh, I thought it was a fun photo and there's some fun things that we can do to it, especially when we jump over into Photoshop and we start to make some selections back here. All right. So as far as what we'd start with, I'm just going to make sure I hit reset here and we'll start from scratch. Um, you know, not too much that we would do to this on the Lightroom side of things. I think on the white balance side, I might want to warm it a little bit. All right. It kind of looks like it's kind of an overcast gray day. So just give it a little bit of warmth to it. Come over here, maybe open up the exposure. Uh, a little bit of the shadows there's there again there's not too much that we're going to worry about back here um highlights there, there's not really any highlights to speak of from a contrast perspective on a photo like this i would usually hold down my option or alt key click on whites and then everything goes black and then just kind of move that to the right and get get a good white point in there all right it's going to probably be right up there in his hat and then the same thing on blacks option or alt click click on blacks and i get a good black point up here. All right, let's see here. So again, there's uh, color wise, we warmed it up. I think everything looks good. Uh, I don't want to boost the colors or anything. Clarity would not really be good on a portrait. Although I do think if I took my brush tool and reset everything except clarity and went and kind of cranked the clarity up, I do think I could paint a little bit of clarity onto his clothes here. It'll just kind of gives a little bit of depth and dimension um, when you do that. So kind of gives a little bit almost a three-dimensional quality sometimes so it'll help him stand out a little bit more but again in a minute here you're going to see we're going to do some photoshop work that's really going to help him stand out all right so i think that's looking pretty good there uh let's take a look what else would we do to this you know again from a lightroom standpoint not too much uh maybe a little bit of sharpening i'll zoom in and uh, i'll zoom in on his face uh let's see here kind of look at the clothes Again, just a little bit of sharpening. I don't want to do too much, especially on a person. What we're trying to avoid is to get that texture that appears on there. So we're going to pull all that back. Even if I start to see it, uh, I can always go to the masking slider and I can pull that back. But I think we had a pretty sharp photo to begin with. So I don't think, I don't think we even need to risk adding any more of that texture on there. All right, so from this point, I'd say we're ready for Photoshop because what I want to do, I want to have a little bit of fun with this one and I really want to help separate him from that background. It's a good candid photo that, you know, any parent, uh, family member, friend, whatever, I, I could see wanting a photo of this. But if we can separate uh, separate the child from the background a little bit, I think we take we can kind of take it up a notch. So let's just head over here. We'll go photo, edit in, and I will jump over to Photoshop. And while it's doing that, how about a quick word from our sponsor, which by the way, is me. I'd really appreciate it if you were on the YouTube page and just clicked on subscribe, which really is just a way of following me on YouTube. It helps me get the word out. And when I do new videos, you'll always know about it. So that way you won't miss any and you won't have to go searching around for them. Okay, now back over to that Photoshop stuff. And once we're over here, our first job really is, uh, I was gonna say our first job is to make a selection, but I think since we're here, um, and we're gonna zoom in, we're gonna zoom in here. He's got kind of a couple little, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, call them little face boogers or whatever we'll call those. Uh, let's just go ahead and clean uh, some of that. Uh, some Looks like we had lunch right before this. So this, I'm just using the spot healing brush to clean it up. I, I think the healing brush is also a good choice. In fact, if I undo a couple of times, I think it'd probably work a little bit better here because what the healing brush lets me do is option or alt click to sample and then paint. I think I just get a better result from doing it that way than the spot healing brush where I don't get the sample at all. It's just going to go in and fix it for me. Okay. So we took care of uh, all the little stuff on his face. Now let's talk about selections. Uh, what I want to do is select the background so I can blur it. So easy thing. Uh, let's press command or control J, make a duplicate copy of the photo here. Take our quick selection tool and I'm just going to start dragging along the background. I'm going to do one quick pass uh, right here in the beginning. And then what we're gonna need to do is kind of go along the edge and fix it a little bit. So I'll zoom in and it's, it's selected too much in most cases. 
right? And so just about all the spots, it's gone too far. So what we do is we hold down the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on the PC, and you'll see the little uh, selection tool has a minus inside of it. So that means I'll be subtracting from the selection there. Oh. Sometimes it's a little give and take where, uh, where it goes a little bit too far. Uh, looks like we missed part of the sleeve over here. Again, option or alt click right along some of these spots here. And it just pulls them out of the selection. Okay. It's worth spending, I always say, it's worth spending a couple of minutes to do this at this point. Um, as you're watching this on the video, I can imagine it's very, very tedious. So I'm really going to speed through it in a second here. Just give me about, I think about 10 more seconds, maybe seven minutes and um, we'll be done. Okay. There we go. So I, I, it's good enough. You know, we've got, we've got everything selected. Um, I, I can't see any spots that we're missing here. So I am good with that. And so you're probably watching this and somebody's screaming through their computer. You missed it over here. Um, but it, we're at the point where we can, we can make our selection work. Uh, we're going to head up here to the select and mask dialog box. And then under view mode, I'm probably going to go, we can try it on white. We can try it on black. Um, I'm going to try it on the, uh, I'm going to try it on the black one. I want to be able to see the edges and it's a pretty bright edge. So we would see it there. So I want to be able to see those edges. If you don't have select and mask, if you're using an older version of Photoshop, uh, the quick mask tool with the refined edge dialog box is pretty darn close to what I'm using here. Um, and then the only other thing here is I might, if I had hair and I had trees and I had some, some non sharp objects, I, I might go in here and, and manually paint those in, um, with this refined edge brush that we have up here. But since I don't really have that, all I want to do, I'm going to let Photoshop do the work for me of smoothing out that edge here and just kind of crank up that radius setting a little bit. And all it's going to do, uh, it's probably even tough to see, but I have to zoom in. What it'll do is if I hit show original, you'll just see it's kind of smooths out the edges in some spots. All right. If you have to go in and fix anything, you can actually use this brush right here and you'll see that it actually, it's, it's basically painting a selection on or off. So if I, if I paint, it's going to add to the selection. If I option or alt click, I can actually take all that away and I can be very, very precise about it. So I think we're looking pretty good here. Let's go down to the bottom and I will output this to a selection. So we'll click okay, which basically means now I have my background selected, All right, So the background selected, nothing else is selected. And then we can go up here to the filter menu. I'd go down to blur gallery and I'd use field blur. Field blur is going to be a better blur for kind of getting a little bit of fake depth and field than most of your other blurs inside of here. So I'm just going to go into field blur. And let's just start to crank that up. Okay. You don't want to go crazy with it. You know, it's not like I shot it with a 85 F 1.4 and the background is totally smooth, but I think we can reduce the distraction of that background a little bit. And not only does it reduce the distraction, cause I don't think the background actually was all that distracting, but what it does is it gives an instantly more of a professional feel to it. Okay. Uh, and it really separates our subject from the background. And that's really what this was about. It's not that we had to, to reduce distraction, but I think it really helps for separation. So we'll click. Okay and command or control D to deselect. And now we've got our nice blurry background back there. If we're thinking for continuity sake, I probably should have made my selection down here as well. So you could go back and do that. And then you've got these walls that are up front here. You could do the same thing, you know, use your quick selection tool, um, go in here, select these walls. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time doing this one, but to go in here, select those walls. Once I have them selected, go back up here. Uh, you can, you know, kind of modify your selection if you need to. And then we'd go to the same filter. The only difference here is I would not, I wouldn't do it as much, you know, I'm not going to make them look so that they're all just, it's almost kind of morphs into one color here. So I wouldn't have to do that as much, but just a little bit of blur, um, and a little bit more time selecting, I think would get us to the point where it allowed that continuity of uh, a little bit of blur up front here too. Okay. Now when we're done, we're just going to hit file save and that's going to return us back over to Lightroom. And then all I did here was I hit reset on the original photo. So this is what we started with. 
And this is where we ended up. And if it were me, I would probably come down here and finish this up with maybe a little bit of a vignette on that background. And if you really want to get crazy, try hitting the letter V for Victor, and that will convert it to black and white. It's a real quick way to, uh, to get a black and white conversion. Take a look at the photo. It actually makes a nice black and white because he's, he's bright. He stands out, which is the way that it should be. Um, and then I think if you went to split toning and maybe added a little bit of a, a warmer tone, they could act, can actually make a really, uh, a really nice, really nice black and white photo there. Okay. So either way, let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look at the before photo. And here is the after photo. Folks, thanks so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here. As I said before, if you like these videos, please do me a big favor. Just click on subscribe over on the YouTube channel. It's just an easy way of following me and following the free videos that I do here. So that way, whenever I do a new video, you don't have to go searching around for them. They'll just get delivered straight to your YouTube feed.